I try not to leave my house too often during this pandemic, only to go to the grocery store and to, well, basically go to work. When I do leave my house, constantly wearing a mask, I got plenty of groceries for her this week, and I don't have to go to work today, but I did have to make a, well, we'll say an essential trip. I'm having a special guest over my place tonight, and, well, I need to get some supplies. Just gonna be a real quick trip, though, real quick. I gotta grab some of this, and I gotta grab some of that. Guys, I'm gonna be zooming tonight with Jimmy freaking Buffett. Jimmy Buffett, the Jimmy Buffett. That's awesome. Do you guys understand that this guy, the real Jimmy Buffett, is gonna be zooming with me tonight? He's gonna be seeing this room, the shark bar. You guys do know who Jimmy Buffett is, right? Margaritaville, fins to the left, fins to the right. Cheeseburger in paradise, changes in latitude, changes in attitude come Monday. This guy's Mr. Summer. Let me clarify something. It's not just going to be me and Jimmy Buffett. It's going to be me, Jimmy Buffett, and about 20 other first responders. I'm talking EMTs, doctors, nurses, firefighters, police officers. Me, I'm a police and fire dispatcher, 911 operator. I'm a first responder. It's going to be a virtual meet and greet, a Q&A of sorts. Jimmy's going to talk to us. We get to ask him questions. He's going to sing a couple songs. A private concert. Only 20 of us. I'm going to bring you along with me. I'm a huge Jimmy Buffett fan from way back. I've seen him probably, I think I counted it last night, 18 times live in concert. My first show was in 1992 or so. But even before that, I was listening to Jimmy Buffett while I was bored cutting grass. Just wishing I was someplace other than there at that moment, on some island, some boat. Any place other than just cutting that grass. He's also got me through many snowstorms and cold New England winters. I mean, I even built a tiki bar on my porch inspired by this guy. I got my margarita mix. I got my Land Shark Lager, which, by the way, is a Jimmy Buffett beer. Now the only thing I have to do is decide what I'm going to wear for tonight's Zoom. Do I wear a Jimmy Buffett concert t-shirt or... Or do I wear a Hawaiian shirt? I don't know. What should I wear? I do know one thing. It's time for a margarita. Oh yeah, that smells like a good one. Aloha. The clock on the microwave said it's almost 5.30. The big Zoom takes place at 6 p.m. I gotta log on about 10 minutes before that. Pretty nervous, guys. I hope I don't start stuttering or you know, crying or something. I mean, this is a pretty big deal. This is a pretty big moment. Almost as big as when I met Bruce Springsteen. Actually, this might be kind of bigger. I mean, Bruce has never seen the inside of my house. I'm not sure if we're allowed to take photos or videos of tonight's Zoom with Jimmy. But just in case, I got my tripod Right here facing my iPad, that's the device I'm going to be using to zoom with Jimmy tonight. I want to document this anyways, just in case we don't get a master copy of tonight's meeting. I mean, after all, this is a pretty much a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, right? So uh, every Friday we've been getting together like this to spread a little bit of joy. Uh, and it's kind of become a series. Jimmy dubbed it our uh, Cabin Fever meet and greet Fridays. And... Uh, we're just so happy to have all of you joining us. We've got this incredible group of frontline medical workers. We have uh, critical care nurses. We have uh, a mom who's in the hospital with her son right now who's fighting COVID. Uh, we have a microbiologist who has been developing a way to expedite these tests for the virus and so many more. So I just wanna say how you know grateful and honored we are, like, like Caroline Jones said, to have you here with us today. And uh, I'll turn it over to this great group of people that's going to provide our, our entertainment and our relaxation for this next hour. We have Caroline Jones and Mac McAnally and Jimmy Buffett. All right, all right. Woohoo! Yeah. Try to have me a little bit, it's happening. Made it every seven day. Use a wave with their speed in sunflower seed. Drinking lots of carrot juice and soaking up rain. Now I'd have these wonderful things. So I'm gonna sit you a tree. Now it's a kitty better cheese. Burger we put a big turkey burger in it. <laughs> Cheeseburger is paradise. And on earth with an onion slice. 
Tiki bar, maybe about 17 years ago. It was inspired by you, sir. It's changed over the years. Let me give you a look here. I, I don't want to take up your time, but um, it's basically it's it's basically everything that I've. I'm a child of the 70s and 80s, and it's basically everything I collected from back in the day that my parents never threw out when I went to college. And where where are you? I, I'm, I'm located right outside of Boston, Massachusetts. I'm a uh, about 12 miles down the road, down the Mass Pike from Boston. I'm a seven, okay. I'm a 17 year uh, dispatcher for police, fire, and EMS, and a 911 operator. And uh, I've seen you 18 times in, in concert around here, Jimmy. Um, the Great Great Woods, uh, Fenway Park, the Boston Garden. A yeah. lot of a lot of those shows I don't remember, obviously, because of Land Shark, you know. <laughs> but there are yeah. there are two specific memories that I, I have of you that I can remember and I'll always remember. One is. When you played the Boston Strong show at the TD Garden right after the tragedy in uh, in 2013 um, yeah. at the marathon, and also when you played that intimate show at um, the House of Blues where there was only 2,000 fans, I was there. I'm never going to forget those two days, Jimmy. My question to you, sir, is: Do you have a, a favorite moment being here in Boston, or a story you could tell us from uh, about Boston? Uh, I would have to, yeah, I would have to say, you know, because. I was lucky enough to have, again, in the earlier days, I played Boston in small clubs like Passim's in Cambridge and Paul's Mall and the Jazz Workshop. And I've known Don Law, the promoter up there, since he was in college. So it was supposed to have been a tough market, but somehow we connected up. And I always thought it's because of, of the, the patriotic spirit of Boston and the nautical tradition. I mean, something connected there. And, uh, and I have to say that... The, uh, I'll tell you a very funny story. When we got to play Fenway Park for the first time, now that's you know those, that's a cathedral of baseball. That's like you know you know that Wrigley Field, that not many left. You know Yankee Stadium and and uh, Fenway Park are cathedrals of baseball. You know, so there you find yourself as a baseball fan, and and in it. And we went in uh, to do sound check the day before. So, and I, and I went out and uh, I had to go out there to the green monster and just throw a ball against the green monster, you know, because you're, um, it's, I get sacred. Yeah, somebody. absolutely. So, and we got to hit some balls out there. We were playing around in Fenway Park. So then cut to the show and the day of the show and I'm up there trying to, you know, we're, it, there's a little bit going on here and I'm, 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 I'm spinning about 12 plates at once. <laughs> but I have to lean over, look over its head, sound check, and I see that they've got the green monster roped off, and they've got security all around it. And uh, and I looked over there, and they're kind of pushing people back, not pushing, but you, know, you can't take pictures and all. And so I went to Don at the thing. I said, "Take that thing down, man. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to do anything there." So I made security take take the barricades down. People had so much fun. I said, they can respect, they're not going to take anything. They no. just want the picture. Made. Absolutely. And so they opened it up and throngs of people went over there and, and got their picture taken with the green monster. And uh, and it, it's, it stayed that way all through the show. And I just loved it. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time, Jimmy. Thank you for being here. Uh, I don't want to put you on the spot, but since we're all doing a little bit of social distancing, you think you can maybe play a bar of uh 
Distantly, distantly in love? Distantly in love? Oh, I, I could do a couple of, hang on, let me, let me put this dog down. All right. Can you sing, Lola? Oh, this is my, all right, come on. All right. I, I can, I'll play a little bit of it for you, okay? Boy, I'm getting tested today. <laughs> this is good for memory of an older folk singer. People's all worrying eyes. We're about. Lovely dancers swaying to an island lullaby. Side the southern ocean, the east shots of what's to be. Writing you this letter that you would probably never see. Cause I can't help but be ruled by my antiquity. Not unique, just distantly in love. Thank you, Jimmy. All right. Be safe. Thank you. Jimmy, what do you say? One more song before we wrap up? <clears throat> sure. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I thought we could either do... Uh, I thought, you know, everybody sounded so good on Cheeseburger in Paradise. I thought I would just play Margaritaville if y'all want to sing along all over the world, and that's okay with me. That all right with everybody? Hell yeah. 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 Absolutely. We'll do a little choreography, too. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. <laughs> We stayed away again in I'm not gonna lie, guys. I was nervous about tonight's interview. Took a margarita and four land shark loggers to get me through it, but I think I nailed it. I think Jimmy Buffett enjoyed my interview with him. He gave me a solid five minutes. That's a lot longer than he gave everybody else. I'm psyched they did my request of distantly in love. I stumbled over the over the song title, but uh, you know, it was nerves and land sharks, and I'm excited that he loved the shark bar. He actually cut me off to say, "Let's talk about this room." <laughs> That's dope. I gotta thank my friend Dave and his daughter Tamara for making this all possible. If you told me five days ago that I was gonna be interviewing Jimmy Buffett this weekend, I would have thought you were crazy. I would have called you a liar. Never in a million years when I thought I'd had that opportunity. What an honor, what a privilege. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Tamara. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Sirius XM. Thank you to all the healthcare workers that were Zooming with me. It was, again, a once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm Thank you. You guys know what to do next. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. I always answer all the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to Detours. Click that red subscribe button. And while you're clicking away, click that small bell. It'll give you instant notification every single time I upload a brand new detour. Check me out on social media. I'm on Instagram at Derek Millen, D-E-R-E-K-M-I-L-L-E-N. On Instagram, I'm posting pictures where I'm currently filming a detour. You're going to see where I am several days before I post that video up on YouTube. And as always, I'll catch you on the next detour.